I wanted to spend a few minutes and provide an introduction to the systems archetypes learning thread. A systems archetype is a well-defined structure that tends to produce a, a characteristic pattern of behavior so that when you find the, the same structure somewhere else, even though it may have different labels on the elements of the structure, you'll find that it'll produce the same characteristic pattern of behavior so that the, the same structure operates in the same way regardless of, of the, the labels associated with the elements of the structure. And, and because of that, because the, stru the interactions are the same regardless of the, of the labels, there can in fact be developed a well-defined set of strategies for dealing with the implications of, of that particular structure. Now in, in 1937, Ludwig von Bertalanffy posed the thought that, that there were in fact basic underlying structures that existed across existed and operated across all disciplines or branches of science. And when I first came across this thought, I said, well, that's a little presumptuous, isn't it? Though as I begin to think about it, I realize that, that all of the branches of science are simply a fabrication of man. Nature didn't create all of these different branches of science. From, from my own personal perspective, there's only one universe that I think I'm aware of, so why shouldn't there be a consistent set of structures operating throughout that, that universe? So I think that what Bertalanffy was thinking about or talking about or making reference to are what are now referred to as the systems archetypes, though I don't believe that they were ever referred to as systems archetypes until Senge came along with the fifth discipline in 1990. Well, they may have been, though that was the first reference that I came across that, that talked about a various array of, of systems archetypes. Now, the as it turns out, there are in fact two basic structures. If you think about a savings account, savings account has a principal amount that you put in the savings account. Periodically, that principal interacts with the interest rate to create interest, and that interest is in fact added back to the principal, and it creates a reinforcing or growth structure, and it's what we call a reinforcing loop. The other fundamental archetype is is a chain structure where there is some current state which is different from the goal and the two of those interact to provide the impetus for action action intended to move the current state in the direction of the desired state so what it creates is a balancing structure or a balancing loop these two structures end up being the the most basic fundamental archetypes out of which all of the others will be created or do in fact evolve and in the context of this learning thread on systems archetypes what I'll do is I will present each archetype from a causal loop perspective and from a stock and flow simulation perspective these are the the two structures on the previous page only implemented as stock and flow simulation models so that when the simulation is in fact run you get an implication of the interaction of the elements in that structure so this shows the growth of the principal in that account but uh, you know I don't know any accounts that provide that kind of interest today um, and it, it just has to do with the formulas that are part of the model and for the balancing structure whereby here is the goal here is the current state migrating toward the goal and the action actually declining over time so this learning thread will present each of the individual archetypes and present them from both a causal loop qualitative perspective and from a dynamic stock and flow simulation perspective so you get a sense of the implications of the interactions within that structure and it will also present a a well-defined set of strategies for dealing specifically with that structure when it's found and numerous examples of that particular structure in various contexts 
maybe in, in business or in one's personal life or in nature, so that you get a sense of how it is that that same structure can in fact be operating in multiple different environments and operate in the same way even though the individual elements have different labels on them. So the real benefit of, of learning about archetypes is that if you can identify the archetype that's operating, you immediately have a sense of how that setup interactions is going to evolve over time and you also know a well-defined proven set of strategies for dealing with the implications of that strategy. Now some people in fact make comments that there are risks associated with archetypes because if you identify the wrong archetype you get the wrong end up with the wrong implied pattern of behavior and you apply the the wrong set of strategies to deal with the structure. And and that is in fact true, though you end up the, with the same risk if you start out from scratch and develop the set of interactions and figure out the, the pattern of behavior and then have to construct the strategy on your own. So uh, I'll leave it up to you over the next um, 15 or 20 videos to talk about all of the various archetypes as to the the extent to which you can really benefit from understanding the interactions and not having to start over from scratch every time you run into a situation. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.